The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Two thousand years before Christ... Antef, the Egyptian king of the 11th dynasty, had this inscribed upon his tomb. There is none who comes back from the dead, that he may tell their state, that he may tell their needs. It is not given to man to take his property with him, nor is there one who departs who ever comes back again. Today, almost 4,000 years later, we have reason to believe this is not so. People do come back from the dead. Rebecca, what does the ghost look like? He's about oh, six feet tall, has a beard, green pants, olive green, and he holds in his hand a long knife. How old would you say he is? Uh, about 30. Anything peculiar about his clothing? Uh, I'd say they were, well, what people wore in the 40s. My dad had pleated pants like his. So it's possible your ghost passed over 30 years ago. Passed over? Died. You see, spirits never grow older. They remain exactly the age they were when they left this world and entered theirs. Our mystery drama, The Ghost with a Knife, based on a psychic case history reported by Bryce Bond, was dramatized especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agate, Jr., and stars Arnold Moss and Patricia Elliott. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You sit around talking with friends and someone asks, do you believe in ghosts? For the most part, the non-believers are those to whom extrasensory experiences have never happened. But there are very many in this world to whom the spirits of another world are very real and active and cry to be heard. One of those who hears them and deals with them is Bryce Bond, a well-known psychic scientist and investigator of the supernatural and supernormal. Let me get out of cases, one in particular. About a week before December the 16th, 1974, I received a call from the president of the Foundation for Parasensory Investigation who told me that a policeman from Mineola, Long Island, called to say that a Mr. and Mrs. Green, a young couple he knew, asked him to come over to their house and investigate a ghost. I set up a date with a couple and asked David Enters, a medium, a psychic, and also a photographer, to come along with me. Oh, come in, come in. You are a... Uh... Uh, Bryce Bond, and this is David Enters. How do you do? Uh, you can leave your overcoat here. I'll uh, hang on to my camera, if you don't mind. You're going to take pictures of our ghost, Mr. Enters? If I can. I didn't know one could. Oh, uh, uh, this is my husband, Leo. How do you do? Our boy Tommy is upstairs. Uh, he's asleep, I hope. I see you've got a camera. I've always thought those pictures of spooks and ghosts were fakes. You know, superimposed shots, that kind of thing. Have you seen this ghost, Mr. Green? I most certainly have. Well, then perhaps so can my camera. I use infrared film. Wherever heat is generated in outline or even in considerable detail... It will register on the film. Oh, I had no idea. Um, <clears throat> may we start? Mr. Green, Mrs. Green, I'll begin by asking you your first names. R Rebecca. Rebecca. And your husband is Leo, and your boy is... Tommy. Uh, Tommy. Well, now, I'm Bryce, and this is David. If we're to help you, we should all try to be as relaxed and informal and friendly as we can. Now, this, uh... This apparition you experience, we want you to regard him or her... It's a man. Well, he's to be regarded as a friend. 
We don't want to antagonize or frighten them. We're the ones who are being frightened. He isn't really a very friendly spirit. He looks horrible. Rebecca, can you tell us when you first saw him? Yes. When I first... It, it, it all started Becky, when... may I? My wife is really very upset about this. You see, she's home most of the time. And I'm at work. So she's been under a much greater strain. I think I can be calmer. There it is. Those are the footsteps. Well, we've sort of become used to our ghost walking up from the cellar. He's been doing that for months now. Leo, I can tell them. Uh, Tommy was the first to see the ghost. Uh, Tommy, my son. He, he came down one morning. He, he's only four. And he said, Mommy, who's that man in my room? He said, I, I woke up in the middle of the night and he was standing there. Oh, we didn't know what to make of it at first. I said to Becky, I think Tommy's having a nightmare. But it kept happening, night after night. That's him, coming up the cellar stairs. Then he opens the cellar door. He's doing it now, in the kitchen. Well, maybe he's showing off because you've got guests. Oh, no, he does that every evening. But most of the time, you don't see him. He doesn't, uh, what do you call it? Materialize. No, no, he doesn't. He just walks around invisible. And I don't like the idea of leaving my wife and son in a house with a strange guy. He's six foot tall. Will you excuse me? I'd like to go into the kitchen and have a look down those cellar stairs. I'll be right back. So he goes up and down the cellar stairs. That's right. It? Through the cellar, into the boiler room. Always follows a pattern. I think he's trying to attract our attention to something. We get the feeling he wants us to follow him down there. And do you follow him? Yes, we have many times. But there isn't anything special down there, so... It doesn't make any sense. Cellar door was open. Went down a couple of steps, but I couldn't see a thing. Took some shots, but uh, I don't have much hope. There's nothing down there but the usual stuff people have in their basements. And the oil burner. Actually, two oil burners. We put in a new one last spring. and Just left the old, useless, rusty one where it was. Leo, how long have you lived here? Mm, since right after last Christmas. Almost a year. It was December 29th. Last year. The house was built in 1929, so the old oil burner didn't owe us anything. Anyway, all this started this past October. For weeks, we only heard noises. And then, as I told you, Tommy started to see the ghost in his room at night. And about a month ago, November, so did we. Well, I'm sorry we didn't know about this manifestation sooner. So am I. But Becky and I, we didn't know what to do. You know, people kid you. And remember Joe Forster, our friendly patrolman. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to tell a policeman? It's one thing just to hear noises. It's another thing to see a man six feet tall. But last Monday, I was alone here with Tommy. And he came at us with the knife. I've done many years of investigative work into the parasensory, but this was the first time I'd heard of a supernatural entity holding a knife. I gave the Greens a complete rundown of who David and I were, the extent of the work of the Foundation, and said that we were quite prepared to help them immediately. You mean right now, this evening? As much as we can. Agreed? I should say so. Oh, yes. Rebecca, let's start by going upstairs to... Tommy's room. That's where he first saw the apparition? Yes, but I wouldn't like to wake him. It's not necessary. And Leo, would you take David down to the cellar so that he can have a look around? It's from the cellar the ghost always comes, yes? And that's right. We think he must live down there. Um, just up these stairs, Mr. Uh... Uh, Bryce. Bryce. Here at the landing, uh, that's our bedroom. Leo's and mine on the right. And Tommy's is on the left. Only Tommy has seen him inside his room. I first saw him here, outside Tommy's door. We're standing right where you're standing. What does he look like? Uh, he's about six feet tall, has a beard, dark hair, a maroon-colored shirt, um, green pants, olive green. And then, uh, now... Carries this big knife. Rebecca, how old would you say the ghost is? Not old. About 30. Mm -hmm. Is there anything peculiar about his clothing? Peculiar? You mean like uh, bloodstains? Oh, no, no. No, no. I mean, is it is it modern 
Or is it old-fashioned? Sort of modern. But not really what you're wearing today. Sort of like what people were wearing 20, 30 years ago. I see. So it's possible the ghost passed over in the 1940s. Passed over? Died. Oh. Do they appear to us in the same clothes they wore when they died? Of course. The same clothes and the same age. Spirits never grow older as we do. They remain exactly the age they were when they left this world and entered theirs. Well, now, can we take a peek into Tommy's bedroom? I'll open the door very quietly. I don't want to wake him. Hmm? Now, where was the ghost standing when Tommy saw him? Mostly at the foot of his bed, most of the times. Right by that window. Oh, and, and that's another thing. Wait a sec. I, I want to show you something. I don't know if this... Would, would you take a look at this plant? Well, what is it? Or should I say, what was it? African violets. Could have used a little water. That's just the point. This morning, this plant was healthy and alive. I got it at the store. It's at least a tenth of... Well, I don't know how many plants or all kinds we've put in Tommy's room. And he loves growing things. We watch them, water them, but they all die. Overnight, they shrivel up. Have you seen enough? Yes, I have. How does Tommy react to the ghost? Well, you know, he's very little. Still... He isn't scared. But he's only four. That's awfully young to understand fear. I'll tell you something I've noticed, Bryce. Whenever I go into Tommy's room, I feel good there. Can you explain that a little better? Well, in the rest of the house, I... I feel uneasy, almost like alarmed. But in Tommy's bedroom, it's really more peaceful. I've had the funny idea that maybe the ghost is protecting my baby, and that's why it feels good in there. Oh, there you are. Well, we explored the cellar. How's everything upstairs, Bryce? It's very interesting, David. As I said before, this ghost follows a pattern. No question about that. You you, you saw nothing in the basement. Nothing visible, but uh, I think, Bryce, we should consider that the old oil burner may have something to do with the ghost. Mm, that had occurred to me, too, David. But what? Well, a number of possibilities, Leo. Somebody may be buried under the concrete. In our cellar? Buried? How horrible. There's no point speculating how this wandering spirit died. Our job is to try to discover... Why he's here. You know, I find it warm in here. It would give us a better working atmosphere if you could please lower the heat. Just just turn it down a couple of degrees. Oh, Leo, we forgot to tell him. Yes, we did. You see, Bryce, he turns up the heat. He? You mean... Yes, that? we forgot to tell you about that. We're no different from anybody else. We've been trying to conserve heat every night. We push the thermostat down to about 60 or 65. Did either of you turn the thermostat down tonight? Yes, I did. I remember distinctly doing it, but just before you two arrived. Now come have a look at the thermostat. 90. Look at that. Oh, let me get a shot. Yep, 90 degrees. That's what he usually pushes it up to. You know, we've gotten up in the middle of the night roasting. Come down... 90 degrees. We haven't been able to figure out what he's trying to do to us. Uh, Leo, uh, move to one side, please, so I can focus. Yeah, sorry. At least now we know he's come up from the cellar and was right here at this spot. This evening. Before, when I heard him walking back down the cellar stairs, I was afraid he'd left us. When strangers enter a house, generally a spirit will not manifest itself. Unless you make a real effort to be friendly. Bryce, can I say something? I mean, about the way I feel... Well, by all means. Uh, I have a funny... No, it's not funny. It's really a, a very strange sense of dread. I never felt it quite so strong. Ah! Peggy, what is it? Oh, don't you feel it? Don't you feel anything? You mean that cold wave of air? Oh, sure, I feel it. I'll just cover the whole room. See if anything registers on the infrared. Oh, we haven't done something awful, have we? I mean, by asking you here. It's, it's very cold right in front of me. Like someone's looking right into my face. I don't think I can stand this much longer, oh, Leo. We must all be calm. And accept the fact that at this very moment, our mysterious friend is in this room. And he's moving about. 
Rebecca and Leo Green are real people. This event really occurred in their Tudor-style home on Locust Avenue, Mineola, Long Island, on the 16th of December, 1974. Bryce Bond and David Enters are witness to this fact. I'll return shortly with Act Two. of a young suburban couple and their two-year-old son are suddenly turned topsy-turvy when their home is invaded by an apparition who appears to live in their cellar and wanders about their house day and night. To live in a house with a spectral stranger is unnerving enough, but when the ghost carries a long, dangerous-looking knife, it can be terrifying. Why is he here? Can he be made to leave? Bryce Bond, the parasensory scientist, picks up the account. We sat in the Green's living room, aware of the rustle of cold air moving around us. The vibrations I picked up made it quite clear that the ghost was in that room at that very moment. Will you folks excuse me a moment? I'm going to have to reload my camera, and I've got my film in my coat. I'd like to turn the lights down a little more. Must we? Suppose I just turn out the overhead lights and leave this one next to the sofa. What about the candles on the mantelpiece? Oh, no. No, no. Leave those burning. That's that's all right. I'm almost afraid to look at the candles. I know that when the flames move, he's there. Rebecca, what was the last time you actually saw him? Last night. You had a good close look at him, hmm? How far away was he? He was standing right there by the mantelpiece. We had gone to bed. I was emptying the ashtrays over here. Mm -hmm. Now, when you saw the apparition last night, did he appear just as physical as I do now? Or did you see through him? He was as clear as you are. In fact, it's (laughs) crazy, but I'd rather really see him than have him be invisible. And when he went, he didn't fade away, or did he? I don't know. I went into the kitchen with the ashtray and dumped it in the garbage... And when I came back into the living room, he was gone. Did he have a knife in his hand last night, Rebecca? I don't know. I don't know. It's just getting too much. I told you, Leo, we've got to move. I don't want to stay in this house any longer. I don't. Oh, honey. I don't. I don't. Come on. That's no way to talk. I think if you can hold on to yourselves for a little bit longer, we may be able to get the ghost to move. There's another side to this. It may not all be as heavy as you think. A lot of apparitions love to play tricks. Uh, In the fall, we were having trouble with the new oil burner, and I was on the phone with the oil burner man, and he said, would I go down and look at some gauge or something? I I went down the cellar steps, and I fell. It was as exactly as if somebody had tripped me. And then it happened again another time. Well, that's funny. I didn't notice any loose steps when I was down there earlier. Did you, Leo? I haven't been down to the cellar tonight. Well, sure you have. You brought me down. I, I took some pictures. Tonight? <laughs> of course. You're, you're kidding me. Oh, I absolutely don't remember. Has this happened before in this house? Somebody's actually gone down to the basement and not remembered? Oh, Leo. I went upstairs to Tommy's room with Bryce, and you took David into the cellar. I did? You don't remember? No, I don't. I did not go down to the cellar tonight. Oh, good Lord. Rebecca and Leo were working themselves up into quite a state, getting increasingly agitated. I knew the vibrations they were creating were negative and would make it almost impossible to communicate with a haunting spirit. I don't know if it's your imagination or mine. This happens to us every single night. Becky and I accusing each other of too much imagination. We even stopped having coffee with our dinner. Rebecca, how good is your imagination? Well, good as anybody else's, I guess. All right. But I'm going to ask you to use it constructively. Now, this is what I want you to do, Rebecca. It's a psychic technique we use if a person is bothered by a poltergeist or an astral form who's tied to the earth, as is your ghost with a knife. Now, I ask the rest of you to remain quite silent. Rebecca, I want you to imagine yourself 
in a ball of white lice. Close your eyes. It won't hurt me. On the contrary. This white light, sometimes we call it the god light, because no evil force can penetrate it. Is the man an evil force? At this point, we don't know. He has a knife. I know that, Rebecca. But holding a knife doesn't necessarily mean he's a man with evil intent. His face. It's not a nice face. But just in case there is danger, superimpose yourself with, or let's say, contain yourself in a globe of white light. A large globe? Do you feel anything? Do you see anything? I have my eyes closed. I know that. But in your mind's eye, you should begin to actually see the white light. It's the light of protection, Rebecca. It's the light of love. I see it. The white light. I'm inside it. I see it. All right, David, it's time now. What's David going to do? More pictures? No, David is also a medium. We didn't want to tell you that in the beginning of our session because sometimes people can't appreciate the sensitivity of a medium and they're somewhat disbelieving. But I think now you're both beginning to believe that we can help you. David, sit back. Be comfortable. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Bryce. Your presence is getting fainter. What's David doing? He's dropping into a trance. Yes. Yes. I see him. I see the man. He's tall. Very tall. David's standing up. His face. His face. That's the face of the ghost. David is making his face look like the ghost's. He wants to speak. He wants to speak through Bryce. He wants to say something, Bryce. No harm. No harm. I mean no harm. Why do you say that, Bryce? Thank you, Bryce. He thanks you for letting him... Use your voice. The ghost had used my own larynx, my throat, to say the words, I mean no harm. This had never happened to me before. Usually it's the medium who speaks for the spirit. We then brought David out of his deep trance. Naturally, he remembered nothing of what had occurred since he's the conduit between the two worlds. I then proposed we examine every room in the Green's house for vibrations, starting at the top. All of us went up the narrow stairs to the attic. Bryce, would you take over now? I'm going to try for some more pictures. Sure. Uh, Rebecca, Leo, let's turn out that electric bulb hanging there. It's better if we're in darkness. Remember, when you can't see the ghost, he also is unable to see you. When his body is visible to you, so is yours to him. Oh! Oh, that startled me. It's only a thundershower. Rain in December? Please, please. Let no one speak. Spectral spirit, we have no thoughts for you but kindness and love. It is time now for you to leave the world of Earth and return to your world. Where there must be God's work for you to do. Do you hear me, Spirit? Speak to us. Make us know why you are tied to this house. You have left behind your loved ones in your world to be here. Spe spectral Spirit, why, why are you in this house? What, 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 do you, what do you want to say? Oh, I feel the weight. Something.
something. Something was taking possession of me. My head became heavy. It was hard to breathe, to get my words out. The spirit was trying to come through and tell me something. At last it passed, and we left the attic. On the second floor, we checked every room. Little Tommy's, where he lay asleep, had the warmest vibrations. Leo and Rebecca's very cold and unusual vibrations. David took pictures everywhere. Bryce, uh, shall we do the exorcism now? I was just going to suggest that. Every room. Exorcism? Isn't that some kind of spooky religious thing for witches and devils and... Well, I don't know what. Leo, you've been seeing too many horror movies. We're not about to exorcise a person, but the runes. But isn't that... Well, kind of sacrilegious? No, no, no. Not at all. Ours is very, very simple. We just try to communicate to see the prevailing entity, and sometimes we do. It appears in a misty form. How do you do it? We use the sign of the cross. I thought the cross was a symbol of what Jesus Christ was crucified on. Oh, heavens, no. That sign isn't the exclusive property of the church. The true cross is fire, air, water, earth. It predates Christianity by at least 65,000 years. I had no idea. The sign was used in those ancient days as a fire line to burn away negativity and to act as a, as a natural blessing. And that's the sign you're going to make now? Exactly as the ancient metaphysical priests did. It's not a religious cross at all. Can we watch? Well, dear Rebecca, you, you should watch. This is your house. This sign will bring peace to it. We blessed all the walls of every room with our perfect cross. David and I both making large hand movements up and down and from left to right. What do we do now? I think now, Leo, we've created a safer haven for the ghost, so... We'll have another try at communicating with it. Why? Why do you have to keep talking to that thing? That awful ghost with a horrible face and that knife. Why don't you just make him go away? We never did anything to anybody ever. Don't you see, Rebecca? If we can get it to tell us why it haunts you, the whole mystery will be solved. Now it's an it. Before it was a him. Is it real? Is it unreal? A thing or a person? Oh, it's too much for me. Bryce, uh, may I explain? Please do, David. Look, uh, Rebecca, Leo, the spirit world is not a world where there is no life. Those spirits, like the ghost with the knife, they have just as much love and compassion as you and I. And that's why... They have love and compassion and act like he does? I'd say even more love. There's a reason for him being here. There is... I... I suppose I shouldn't be making such a fuss. Maybe... Maybe he is just trying to tell us something. Well, that's what I'm hoping, Rebecca. So, will you bear with David and with me? And that's 12 o'clock. Let's have a, another go at it. David? Leo? Rebecca? Will you give us a chance? We do know what we're doing. 12 o'clock. Rebecca, I'm going to ask you again to turn out the lights and just leave the candles burning. David doesn't need much light to find his way into the other world. Hard to believe, is it? This is not fiction. It's fact. The foundation for parasensory investigation indeed exists. Scientific psychic explorer Bryce Bond is a real person. And the events you are listening to happened. To what extent this couple and their child were freed from the haunting of the ghost with a knife, we shall find out when I return shortly with Act Three. When you enter a new world, you are a stranger until you learn the language. Everything is foreign, unexpected, almost mysterious, until you know the ABCs. 
so it is also in the world of mathematics, space travel, medicine, and science. So it is in this strange world of psychic phenomena. At last, Rebecca and Leo Green are trying to understand the key to it, as well as the key words to free themselves from this astral visitor. Bryce Bond continues. I told them I felt we were getting close to the solution. The next step was for David again to enter a trance state. Trance state. Now, what's that, they wanted to know. I explained that through David, we'd be able to enter the mysterious land of the spirit side. I'm sorry I acted like that, Bryce. It was stupid of me, especially when I believe we're on the home stretch. I really do want to know. So do I, every step of the way. And you were telling us about trance state, Bryce. It's a state of being and non-being. For instance, when I do my healing, I drop down into a trance state, meaning myself, my ego, the Bryce Bond ego, leaves me. As David's is leaving him now. Why do you do that? Can we have silence, please? David is freeing himself so that he can channel all the energy from above. You see? Now watch him. He's shaking his head. And now he's nodding. Do you see? I mean no harm. I mean no harm. Neither do we, sir. Let me assure you, we wish you no harm. And we believe you wish us none. No. No harm. I want you to listen to me carefully, spirit. Here on Earth, it is now winter time, December. In a little more than a week, it'll be Christmas. Do you remember Christmas? Christmas. The time of goodwill to men and the time of peace? Christmas. The year is 1974. Understand? 1974. That's right. That is the year it is today. Now, can you tell me when it is you passed away, passed over? I am glad. I'm glad to talk to you. You have opened the gate for me to talk to you. I'm also glad. Do you remember what year it was you passed over? When? You say... Winter or summer. Like this time, snow and cold outside. Do you remember the year? year? The year. The year you died. The year. I don't remember the numbers anymore. What do you remember? I can't tell you how it was. I was very sick and I couldn't go out. I'd sit up in a chair all dressed and I'd listen to the radio a lot. There were little plays on the radio every day. Soap operas, they called them. I lived a whole year listening. They kept me alive. I didn't want to leave them. Nobody would let me out of my room. And I hadn't put it right. What hadn't you put right? I knew as I lay there, I hadn't fixed it right. It would go wrong. What is it that would go wrong? I want to Is it something you want to tell Rebecca and Leo and Tommy? I love little children. What is it that's troubling you? Do you want to tell them something? You are warning them. Is that it? What harm? What harm? Yes, try. Rebecca and Leo and Tommy don't know who you are. But they love you. The strength of their love is wishing you to tell them. What harm? Spirit, somewhere here on earth, you must have left behind some loved ones and they love you too. Can you hear me? Can you hear me still? The ghost has gone. Oh. Are you all right, David? Uh, yes. 
He was very strong, wasn't he? We almost found out why he comes here. It's something he's left undone. Thank you, David. <sighs> Won't our ghost come back? I hope so, but I don't know. I'd imagine that until his job is finished, he won't leave you. What job? What is it? What could he have yet to do? Shh, shh, shh. Oh, close our eyes now. I shall speak for all of us. At this very moment, we are all going to the cellar door. Yes, yes. We want to go down the cellar stairs. I have that feeling, too. Yes. A sense of urgency. Now, now, we must go now. Yes, 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 we mustn't waste a moment. There was no question about it. It was a pull as strong as gravity. We all knew we had to go down to the basement. I led the way, and then, strangely enough, like Rebecca had done before me, I too tripped on the last step and almost fell. There he is. Over there. By the cellar window. Oh, yes. I hope I've got enough film left in the camera. He's coming this way. He's moving over to my workbench. Friend. Friend. What is the warning you have for us? Show us. Show us. He's doing something with his foot. Remember, dear friend, we wish to help you do what you have left undone. Then you can return to your world. Can you hear me? Can you understand me? Bryce, I don't want to take any more pictures. I have a strong sense of unity with him now. If I'm in a trans state, accept that and do whatever he says to do through me. Of course, David. The pictures are not important. Now I have exactly the same sense of haste, of something to be done quickly, quickly. Oh, there he goes. Into the oil burner room. <laughs> Gas leaks down here. What? Back. Danger. What leaks? I, I, I never smelled anything down here. Good Lord, yes. It is gas. Do something now. Now. Hurry before it's too late. Emergency service, island lighting. Yeah, this is Leo Green, 1447 Locust Avenue, Mineola. There's a gas leak in our basement. Will you send somebody over right away? Green, 1447 Locust, Mineola. Do you have your oil burner on right now? Uh, Becky, do we have the oil burner on right now? Of course we do. C can't you hear it? Yes, we do have it on right now. Do you have a red box marked emergency switch? Uh, just a moment. Do we have a red box, an emergency switch? Yes, at the head of the stairs. Yes, we do. Right at the head of the stairs. Well, will you go there now and switch it off? We'll have somebody around to your house very shortly. was quite true. The message relayed through David by the ghost. There was a gas leak. It had been seeping for quite some time. The power company told the Greens that had they not been alerted, in a matter of hours, their house on Locust Avenue might have gone sky high in an explosion. Everything was turned off and made safe by three in the morning. We were all sitting around in the kitchen, finally having some coffee. All those days and days and nights of not knowing. Oh, and now it's all over. <laughs> Did you take a look at Tommy? Yes, he hasn't stirred. He slept right through the whole thing. Funny, when I went up to check on him, I felt this very warm vibration, and I thought, I, I know. A ghost has come up to Tommy's room to say goodbye. Then, all of a sudden, the feeling just disappeared. Your little boy had a friend. I don't think you'll have any problems about keeping plants alive in his room anymore. Well, couldn't it have been the gas? Plants are sensitive to that. You think that's what it was, Rebecca? Oh, Leo. Sometimes I begin to really wonder about you. It was the ghost trying to warn us. Oh, come on, now. Can't there be a natural reason for something? Everything can't be explained by the supernatural. But there was no gas leak anywhere near Tommy's room. You come on, now. Uh... Look, friends, we have a report to write and some sleep to get. Thank you for the coffee. Oh, Bryce, you and David were real friends. It's been an experience I don't think either of us will ever forget. I'd say on the whole we had a very peaceful reaction. Don't you agree, Bryce? Oh, yes, indeed. This 
This ghost with a knife, he was quite a peaceful entity. Not a negative entity in the slightest. Only negative briefly to frighten them into action. I hesitate to think where we'd be tomorrow if you two hadn't shown up. (laughs) Who knows? Possibly our friend the ghost would have still found some way to warn you. When I think of it, he did everything short of ripping the thermostat off the wall. And still we didn't get the message. Nice fellow. You know, towards the end there, I sort of wished I could have gotten to know him better. You don't think you'll be back? I doubt it. Not even for a short visit? Well, good night all. Uh, where did you put our coats? Oh, I'll show you. Good night. And thank you, everybody. We'll let you know if my pictures show anything. I mean, David, didn't you feel that way? That you'd like to have known the ghost better? I would. Leo, who knows? If everything hadn't worked out, then maybe yes. You might have gotten to know him real well. You might have spent Christmas with your ghost in uh, his world. Today, at the Green's house in Long Island, there are no more mysterious footsteps. The thermostat stays where you put it. Plants grow. And on Thursdays, when Rebecca's bridge club meets, there are no strange men in the kitchen. But there is a larger meaning to the story you have just heard, which I'll tell you when I return shortly. step, a higher intelligence tried to communicate danger to an average couple living in an average town. You have heard how the parasensory investigators took the steps that freed the astral being so that it could return to its world and get on with its own life. What, in our language, our words, was this being? Was it the mind? Some scientists say so. For the mind of man never dies, only the body. And so it is entirely possible that life can exist on the spirit side. And perhaps one day we shall all find out why and how. Our cast included Arnold Moss, Patricia Elliott, Bob Caliban, and Gordon Gould. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. What did she say, Sally? What did the buttweeds the dame say? Listen. Charles Frederick would go to these wild, primitive places that were filled with all kinds of, well, we would call them superstitions. Got every word down on tape. (laughs) Hey, that tape recorder sure does a trick. Mm. Did you get the pictures? Oh, sure. Oh, you can't beat that little wristwatch camera. Okay. There's lots of work to do. I'll develop the pictures, and you start listening to the tape. Honey, this could be it. How much do you think is in it? Well, she's supposed to be worth four or five million. Oh, are we sure? She's a believer. Oh, yeah, I could tell by the way she talks. I checked her out. She goes for the message from the other world stuff. She's a live one. Mm, I could sense that. Well, we hook the fish. Let's bring her in. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.